Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello and welcome to the video for C++ with blueprints, working with config files slash ini files. Configuration files or ini files are files that are used to have user readable text inside the engine. A common example might be like our engine INI, which has some settings in here, but you can read it. So for example, you know this one is called sticky keys hotkey and the value is equal to false. You have a key and a value. It makes it in a user readable format. Unfortunately, these INI files aren't really readable or writable by default from the engine, but they're great for things like user edited content. Maybe you have a dedicated game server, and in that dedicated server, you have the name of it, the max number of players, a uh, description, maybe a welcome message. Rather than having the player have to like load up the engine and then you save them to a custom file, you just make it an INI file. All they have to do is edit the INI file, and then you can read it in as needed or write it out as needed inside the program using the nodes we're going to create right now. So the first thing you need to figure out is how in the hell we would even do this. So we know where these INI files are, and we know the names of these INI files. But write, writes and reads to these INI files. Your settings is one of the good places that does it. Look for something that might be unique so we can figure this out. So like in this case, under movies, you have some variables here. Boolean wait for movies to complete. A Boolean movies are skippable. And then an array called start at movies. So let's search. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for startup movies. That would help if I search through the actual code base here. So I'm looking for startup movies in the Unreal Engine code base, and I have four results. This first one's kind of cool. It's an array called startup movies, and it uses this code right underneath it with the startup movies in it. And then it says, hey, if startup movies equal to num, do zero. So we could read the whole code. But we have what we need right here. And if we look at other things, we can see, hey, look, it does it again right here. So we're good. That's the code we need. What does this code do? Well, we have gconfig git array. So what does gconfig git array do? Can we figure that out? Well, this little nice happy arrow means gconfig is a pointer to something and git array is going to be a function on it. So gconfig. Let's go through our documentation. We'll look for gconfig. Well, someone else has already helped us out figure these things out, but you notice gconfig comes back with like f config cache or gconfig. Okay, gconfig is of type f config cache. Okay, and it's going to be a static type so we can refer to it later. Okay, there we go. f config cache ini. Um, what was that we had? Git array. Okay, so let's try git array. Oh, let's actually search and we find git array. I bet you they have other things like git string, which is what we're going to use. Git string. And they probably have set string. So let's figure it out. So git string returns back a Boolean, probably if it's true or false, probably if it came through good. Takes in a section, a key, outputs a value, and no outputs a value, gets a value, and gets, uh, you need a file name obviously to get it from. So our getter needs these four pieces of information. And if we look at our setter, 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 set string, section key value file name. What do you know? It's the exact same stuff. So all we need to know is we need to pass in a section, a key, and a value, and a file name. And we need miscellaneous config cache as our header. And we know we need a core module. And we already have the core module because it's a core module, so that's not an issue. So if we look in here, here's what I did. I made myself a nice little readable help string. I made it a blueprint callable function, which I'll explain why shortly. Hopefully you'll know though, based on the previous video. And then we're going to, when we write it, we're gonna get back a Boolean. And we're going to write a string to a config file. And we need our section, key, value, and file name. Well, that's simple enough. And then for reading, We'll read it from a config file, section, key, file name, value. Well, that's pretty simple. Now, this one right here is reading from a string, so we need to return back 
our value. So that's why we have the output of the value. These are our inputs, and that's going to be our output. That's why we have our constants. Cool. Should be simple by now. We found what we wanted in here, and we're just going to put it in here. The nice thing is you could always take this information and grab it from someone else that's using it on the API documentation and paste it for use. Okay. Really simply, let's do reading and writing. Well, we probably want to write first so we have something to test with. First thing I'm doing is checking to make sure gconfig is valid. If not, you return false. And if you look through some of the other code examples, you'll see that they're trying to do the same thing farther up. It's always a good thing to check, just like you do in Blueprints. Make sure something's valid before you use it, or else you can crash. And it's not like Blueprints where you get an error, something's null, that everything explodes when you're using C++ and you try to access something that doesn't exist or it's null. Don't do it. It's no, not good. We're going to ignore this one for now because all we're caring about is this right here. This code right here is the same thing as this code right here. It's just put into a format that makes it a little more readable. So like, for example, I'll paste in the code. And all I did was make it more readable. So that's our first line right there. And we end a line with the comma. And we end a line with a comma. End a line with a comma. End a line with a comma. And then we close it out. And there we go. And technic, yeah. So that just makes it easier to read because we have things separated rather than one long line. The string is what we wanted, for example. So I'm using set string. And it wants a T character section, T character key, T character value, and an F string file name. So you can see all those things there. And it's expecting the pointer section, the pointer key, well, not pointer, it's the value section, value key, value, value, and then the um, file name with the fun and sign on it. If we tried to pass in our values normally, so like that, we're going to get an issue. And it's going to tell you because no suitable conversion function from blah to blah exists. No suitable function, blah, no suitable function, blah. Okay. You're thinking to yourself, oh, I have no idea what that means. I have no idea what's going on. Well, let's, you know, what do we want? Gconfig set string. Okay. That's simple enough. Gconfig set string. Again documentation and the code it's always great ah uh, did i do that one wrong let's find out whoops copy the rule let's see so we want gconfig set string okay yeah that's what we wanted so maybe we need that no oh that's kind of weird why don't we have a set string a set string like that okay there we go i i don't know why i'm guessing i typed it in wrong because there's gconfig set string but you'll notice we have the stars in some of these when it's declaring things. You'll notice the type that comes in. If you Google the answer to this one, or you ask for help, or you try to your out stuff yourself, basically an F string, if you use the star in front of it, converts it conveniently into the T care that we need. So if we mouse over that, you'll see it converts it over to a constant tcare, tcar, tcare, whatever. It just returns the pointer to an array of tcare. So it automatically gives us the array by doing that. So that's how you would use set string. And the nice thing is once you learn it, you're done. You don't have to worry about it again. You got it working. We're good to go. And then at the end right here, you need to take your gconfig. You flush out your gconfig that basically says write it to the disk. And you're writing it out right here. And then we're returning back true because it worked. If not, we return back false because it didn't. The other lines are helper lines. So, for example, if we were to comment this out and comment that out. And we need to replace this with a capital F because we don't have our lowercase file name anymore. And we're going to go ahead and go back to our project. And we're going to hot reload. Hot reload is useful in this case because we didn't change our header. All we did is change some of our code for testing purposes. Maybe it enabled to disable debugging or testing things so we can hot reload and it should work without an issue. We're going to go into our example here. Hot reload's done. And all my example is doing is writing to a config file called my file. 
I'll hit play. True. It's written out. Great. Where is it at? Well, that's a good question. Let's look at some of the things we can do to figure it out. Because honestly, all this says is set string file name, but where is it going to write it to? Is it writing it to your C drive? Is it writing to our, you know, where is it saving this file out? So we have a UE log macro. And the UE log macro writes things out to our console. So in this case, I'm going to tell it to write out our file name. We can go ahead and whoop, back to the program, back to here, hit compile again, let this thing compile. Once it's done hot loading, again, we only changed a module internally, not the header, so we should be good to go. We'll run this again, and we'll look at here, and all you see is my file. Well, that's super duper helpful. Where the hell is my file? Sure as hell isn't there, and it isn't there. So, honestly, where in the hell is this thing writing our file at? Um, binaries, Win64. So, you have no idea what it's writing to, and that's kind of one of those issues. There's multiple config files in here. I mean, we could search for my file, I guess. But is it keeping it just as my file? Oh, shoot, look at that. We don't even know where it writ to. And where it's going to write to is going to be different depending on if you're using the editor or not. So, after a lot of confusion, you're going to be like, what the hell? Well, if you look through some of the other code, and again, it's all about searching, you notice at the end of these we have different INI settings. These are the INI settings for the files that Unreal Engine uses. So, if we go to our saved config windows you'll see we have all of our different ini files here and there are different static keywords for the different files so in this case for example default engine path is going to be a path for the default engine if we find g editor per project ini you're going to find one called editor per project user settings so it matches all those things in addition to that, we have helpers. And if you Google and look for helpers, like for the engine directory, config directory, and things like that, we're going to find the paths. This gives us access to paths that the engine uses. So, for example, if we were to go to the definition for it, you'll see launch directory, engine directory, engine user directory, content directories. And if you look through here, you'll find a bunch of other config directories. One of them is the generated config directory. That's where all the config files are supposed to go for your project. So what we do is we take our file name right here, and we're appending that to the generated config directory. And then on top of that, we're appending .ini because you're supposed to have .ini in there. We're going to nuke our... Oh, we don't need to nuke... We need to keep our log for now because we want to see where that's at. We're going to change this over to use the small f version of it because that's our f string version. And we will hot load again you'll notice we've had no issues with hot reloading so far because we're only changing the code and i mentioned that again because i mentioned before hot reloading is not a big deal as long as you know what you're using in the beginning maybe don't play with it but if you're really only messing with just like the core scripting part not the actual header file should be fine write our example again there we go projects ue4 cpp example saved config my file to ini so we go back to here UE4 CPP examples saved config my file to INI, which should be in here, but it's not. So we need to figure out why it's not. And there's multiple dots there. Did it actually save it out? Did it did I fail on something here in terms of flushing? Is this a hot reload issue? Well, let's find out. Let's close this. Let's rebuild inside of the editor. And of course, we're waiting for the editor. Okay, and we'll look in Windows, by the way, and it's not in Windows, just in case you were wondering. This Windows folder is kind of specific to the plain editor stuff. And then we will debug. So now we're going to go and debug out. Do, 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 do. 
And now our debug editor is going to load up. We have our new module being loaded because we built it out without the editor running. So we're running all clean code. We've cleaned out any temporary stuff by doing this. So we should have all nice, happy, clean code. We'll do this. We'll hit play again. We'll look. Projects UE4, see for example, save config my file ini. We'll look in here and look, there's our my file ini. We didn't do anything different except shut down the project, recompile the module, and then reload the module. And all of a sudden started working. Our code never changed. So when I mentioned weird stuff happens, shut everything down, recompile your module, load everything up. This is why a lot of the more professional developers using C++ don't recommend hot reloading. Something may happen that cascades and you never know. But now we have a my file to ini. You can see we have my section, my key equals my value. We're looking into our example that we created. And we passed in that information. We can see we passed in my section, my key, my value, my file. And then the reading is exactly the opposite of that. We look at our code. We make sure we have a valid gconfig. We parse. You'll notice right here, this is going to fail because it doesn't match. So we'd want to make sure all of your stuff matches. Make sure you're using the same code. Maybe make some, maybe like a, um, uh, a general variable called like the ending oh, pre prefix suffix. Prefix, suffix, suffix, the ending of a file, for example, so that way it's always the same. But you notice in here, we're passing in which section we want to get it from, which key we want to get it from, which file name, and then we return it back a value. F string defaults to nothing, so if we have nothing in here, it's going to have nothing as a return. So we're going to go ahead, since we fixed that, we are going to shut down our project, rebuild it out. Yes, we want to stop debugging because obviously we ran into an issue last time. And once this is done, we're going to reboot it back up and we're going to be able to test and we'll be able to pull out those files. And you can read and write any files you want. And I'm going to restart my project with the U project because I can. You don't have to debug. You can restart the U project as long as your module is good to go. And once it's done loading, we should now have access to being able to read and write strings and do what we want with. So for example, here is my read and we'll hit play. And you notice it says my value here. Someone, I could change this. So I could say my new value and we will compile and save. And you notice it says my new value. If we were to look, for example, for my new key, it should return back nothing. We don't have a key. We don't have a my new key. We only have the my key. So we'll look back for my key. And this gave us the ability for someone to come in and not the source directory, save directory, config directory, my file. And they can change this to my key equals my awesome key. 